excitement is happening right here in Tampa Bay, where we are actually here on the Walk Fest Kid Fest, where we are too good for drugs and violence. The Mendez Foundation, big primary sponsor for this event, and a lot of great people along with the Mosey, the Museum of Science and Industry, have made this day all happen for these beautiful young people. Oh my God, great day in Tampa Bay. The sun is beautiful, the weather is great. You can ask for anything better. Look at this great crowd. Hello. Okay, so an event this great and this large would not be a great event without community involvement. And so we were able to snag Leslie Genowine, who is with the Mendez Foundation, to talk more about what happens with these banners that are selected from beginning to end. And if Leslie, you can share a little bit with us today. Welcome. We are so excited about our banner competition, which is the way that we kick off the Too Good for Drugs and Violence Walk and Kid Fest that we have every year. And we have elementary students, we have high school students, middle school students, community-wide agencies enter the competition and it is judged by a panel including the police chief, Castor, and the, uh, all of the students and all of the community competitors get so excited about this event. We start the kick or the uh, actually the walk off in the morning with the competition and then the winners of the competition for the very first time this year will have their first place uh, banners hanging in the Glazer Children's Museum in downtown Tampa. And we would just like to share with the entire community how excited we are about the banner competition and let them know about the walk. If they've never been, we invite them to not only enter the banner competition next year, but also come to the walk in Kid Fest. So wonderful. Anything else you want to share about this Mendez Foundation? And I like the part that you were saying about these programs are in every state. Yes. And have an opportunity to share that piece. Well, the Mendez Foundation is based in Tampa, Florida, and we've been around for 30 years. We actually have our programs in every single state in the United States. So people from California all the way to Florida are experiencing and learning about different skills uh, that they have gained through the Mendez Foundation. And also, of course, drug and violence prevention is a big part of this. So not only do they gain skills, peer pressure refusal skills, and um, all kinds of other uh, essential life skills, but they also learn about the fact that drugs are bad for them, and they learn at a very young age. Uh, the Mendez Foundation is in 50 states in the Union, and we have K through 12th grade, so we have students who come to our event every single year, and they may be seniors in high school and say that they have been with us and with this program since kindergarten, so we're so excited. We, one of our cheerleaders today, one of the Buccaneer cheerleaders, uh, was a student, and she did have the Mendez program and said she was so excited to be here today because she, she obviously knows what it's all about and, and feels very strongly about it. We are at the Mosey, or should I say the Museum of Science and Industry, and this is We Are Too Good for Drugs and Violence, the annual event. Well, of course, these kids are out here. They're being judged on their banners, and they're wanting to send a message that we are too good for drugs and violence. They want us to stay on a great path to health, happiness, and wholeness. Of course, the part of this process for the We Are Too Good for Drugs and Violence is the actual competition for the judging. So we're going to step over here and show you what it was all about this morning when it started so early in the AM. They're sending a message of creativity, a chance for change, and a chance for kids to live pure. Say no to drugs, say no to violence, but most of all, say no to bullying. Go kids!
Okay, so hi everyone. Of course, it's uh, no further ado here that we wanted to talk to one of the primary sponsors for this. We are too good for drugs and violence, Walk Fest and Kids Fest here in Tampa Bay. Well, I have the pleasure of having Mr. Charles E. Mendez, not the second, but the third, standing right here next to me. I love it, the third. And he is the managing director for the Mendez Foundation. But you know, it's a pleasure to have you here because you make this ball go. You make it roll with power. And your father and your family have been an intricate part of it for the years, correct? That's correct. Tell us why your involvement. Well, we've been involved in drug prevention for uh, almost 30 years now. And it's a big part of, well, it is what we do at the foundation. And we, we believe very strongly in giving children the tools they need to grow up healthy and strong so they can live productive lives. And that means being drug free and violence free. So we do this event so that we can bring the community together to really emphasize what we do in school, which is to provide you know, comprehensive prevention education K-12, through which we think is very important. Wonderful. So tell us why you and your family decided, because it's your father and the entire family, the Mendez Foundation, why did you get involved with this particular event? Uh, this particular event dates back to uh, the Just Say No days from Nancy Reagan and in the nationwide push in the early 80s to really demonstrate, you know, the need to, for children to take a stand against drugs, you know, visibly. And so those are the roots of this event, and we've just continued evolving and growing over the years to get to where we are today. Okay. So fantastic. So this education, I want to know a little bit more about the piece, about the, um, I guess it would be the comprehensive piece that is done in the schools. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Absolutely. Drug prevention is an important skill that encompasses a number of life uh, skills, you know, decision making, dealing with peer pressure, dealing with, uh, you know, goal setting and all the things a child really needs to, to have built into his system or her system as they, you know, grow up and learn how to interact with others and make decisions for their future. So, you know, when you are able to make decisions and really set goals for your life, you are no longer really affected by as much by peer pressure. You can, you can prioritize your own goals and see that, you know, drugs don't have to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, think about the, the, the violence piece and also the bullying piece. It's bullying we know across this country has actually caused some teens today to commit suicide. Um, it's a horrific statistic throughout the nation, but on the violence piece, what would you say to a classroom of young people about saying no to just violence? Well, violence erupts usually from an inability for people to communicate with each other, you know, mm -hmm. to really to settle their diff differences peacefully, to really understand where each other's coming from. You know, it's important to have empathy with your peers and your friends so you can deal with things that, you know, you're not always going to agree about everything. So I think what happens is bullying is sort of an offshoot of, you know, the difficulty to communicate. And I think, you know, as, and then it escalates to violence as in adulthood, when we really don't know how to deal with our own fear, our own insecurities and our own you know difficulties in our own growing up so we try to build you know really that capacity within this child to really recognize those feelings recognize their anger recognize where they're having conflict and deal with it productively and peacefully and not get into dealing with you know not violently sorting out their problems so I like how you say that about the ineffectiveness to communicate because we think that if we can push our way and we can bully or manipulate people that that gives us power but really I love what you say the undercurrent of that is actually fear fear that we won't be seen as powerful, right. fear that we won't be seen as I have it all together, fear that I can make good sound decisions. So again, let's go back to that fantastic Mendez classroom, and if you had the opportunity to tell these young people something, you know, really powerful, what would be the number one thing you lead them with? They should, you know, I think it's important for children to understand that they matter. Mm -hmm. What they think is important, their feelings are important, and that it's okay to be different. It's okay to be your, on your own. It's okay to make your own choices, mm -hmm. you know, and just respect yourself and others, you know. It's important to know that others do things differently than you do and that, you know, we're all a composite of people that all have different motivations, different ideas, different thoughts. So that's, you know, I think to, to really love yourself not in a cheesy way, but really in a, it's important to know yourself and to find out who you are. It's very important. And I want you to speak a little bit about, you know, because drugs and violence are one thing, but the piece about this is a walk fest and a kids fest, and we have some of the most obese young people in the nation. So this is great that they're out here killing two birds with one stone, but speak to the obesity piece and how, what your message would be about that. Well, I think there's so many things that go into what helps us choose what to eat and how to eat, you know, and there you can speculate, you know, and talk about all of the factors in it. I think that, you know, making good choices is very important, you know, and understanding your priorities, you know, if you want to be healthy, what does that mean to you? Where, where can you get good information? Where can you, 
you know, find out what is the best thing to eat and what is the best way to, you know, how do you deal with the busy life, you know. I think parents are, are challenged these days with so many things they're trying to do that, you know, cooking dinner is, is often kind of pushed to the, to the margin of their day. So I think that, you know, if people struggle with what, what, where do they find the best information to make the best choices. So, you know, we try to set a good example and help people sort of, we try to model what we think is a good thing to do, but it, it is difficult. So, you know, we can play a little role, but it is, it is a big, big problem. Anything that you want to say that I have not asked you that we need to know about the foundation or if you had an opportunity to speak to a nation of young people and you wanted to leave a power message of hope to these young people, what would you say? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I think it's, it's very important that, that, that young people really, you know, try to learn about what they want to do with their lives, where they want to go. Not what do you want to be when you grow up, but what do, you, what do you really like? What do you really love? Where do you want to go? And then start to chart that course to get there. What do you? What resources? What help do you need to, to get to where you want to go? You know. I think then you can start to see the things that don't go where don't take you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know things like drugs, things like getting you know getting into violent behavior, they get in your way. And I think it's hard to see that as a young person because it may seem like a place to escape, but really it it just holds you back. And I think that's you know, you know I think just as a young person to really just Listen to your feelings, listen to your thoughts, listen to where you are. That, I think, is the, the first step. The first step. Powerful. Now, I appreciate your time. I will just say thank you for being here with us today and making this event, along with many other supporting sponsors, make it all happen for the young people. Thank you very much. We're very excited to do it. I'm very happy that you're here. Thank you. Okay, so this event wouldn't be great without family, friends, and fellowship. Of course, we're at the MOSI, the Museum of Science and Industry, and we are too good for drugs and violence. Well, I found a beautiful family with a beautiful daughter, and she's very talented, Mr. Shaw. He is here to tell us what his thoughts on today's event and to tell us about his dynamic daughter, Kia. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Tell me what you thought about the event today. It was to totally awesome. Anytime you can get kids together at a young age as, as such as this to let them know that they are too good for drugs, it is something that needs to be spread throughout the community. So I totally support the Mendez Foundation and everything that they're doing along with Mosey to promote the kids and to stop the violence and bullying that's going on in schools today. You know, you sound like yourself you might be an educator or have done <laughs> some sort of educating yourself. So what do you say to young kids when you have an opportunity to talk to them about, you know, just stay, stay away from the drugs, say no to bullying, and the texting while driving and just texting, period, is taking over the classroom. So what would you say to that? I would, first of all, I would always say to kids, whatever your dream is, you can accomplish it. Find someone who can mentor you to achieve that dream, and the sky is the limit. As far as texting and driving, that's something that's perilous to our teens they come, um, nowadays, mm -hmm. and it's a system. Statistics show that there are a lot of kids being hurt in accidents due to texting and driving. And bullying in school is something that we can partner with other schools and other children to stop bullying in school. Because our kids go to school to learn, not to be in fear of who's going to do something to them in the hallways. Wonderful. And your lovely wife is here, but she says, I don't want to talk on camera. <laughs> but what is your wife's name? Catherine. Catherine. And now we get to talk to the young lady of the hour, Miss Kia. Miss mm -hmm. Kia, tell us a little bit about what you do and why you're wearing this beautiful, beautiful, should I say banner across your breastplate yes. here. Okay, <laughs> Miss Florida. Well, I'm your Miss Florida preteen, and I'm with the National American Miss Foundation. And I competed in a series of optional or competition and it consisted of interview, community service, and grades is a very big part of it. And I am a straight-A student, and I am with the National Junior Honor Society, so school is a very big part of the, of the pageant system. And I'm out here to just tell kids that they can do what, like, they can follow their dreams and that no matter what, you can always go for your dreams. And I'm out here to help people and show them that it's not just about you. You can help in any way. Okay, so earlier you told me what's some of your favorite subjects because it seems like you're a math guru and that was one of the subjects, geometry and trigonometry that I ran from, but I did very well in it. So tell me a little bit about this math thing. Well, I do love math. Math has always been my favorite subject even though I wasn't that good at it, but now I'm like really good at it. So I really love math. Math has always been my favorite subject. Tell me, what do you eat? Because I'm sure you have a healthy diet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Dad raises his eyebrow. <laughs> pizza every day. Pizza, pizza every day. Pizza, you yes. eat pizza? Yes, all the time. All the time. You have a high metabolism. Yes. Okay. Do you eat junk food? Yes. You do. Yes. Okay. What's your favorite junk food? Um, I like Oreos. I like 
I like the Hostess Cupcake. The Hostess Cupcake. Yes. And Mom, you're laughing because you get a witness on that, okay? Yes. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you, Mr. Shaw, and My your family. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, and keep doing what you do. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Blessings to you, Kia. Yeah. Okay, so we're having an exciting time out here, and of course these kids are getting hungry, but I did go and snag a family, a beautiful family, Mrs. Wendy Martinez, Augie, and Gianna. So why did you decide to bring your kids out for this event today? Uh, because it's a great opportunity to keep them busy, first of all, and um, so they are exposed to other people and listen to the messages that we all have to say and um, to learn how, how to say no to drugs and violence. If, the, if it comes to them. Tell us, what would you say to your friends who are being, you know, swayed by a little peer pressure, you know, to say no to drugs and violence, even though the drugs and violence may be there? I would say not to join drugs and just keep doing what they're doing to change. We'll okay. try to change everyone. Okay, wonderful. And then, so, when you have a group of friends that seem like they're being swayed by peer pressure, what would you say to them to say, hey, just don't do that? <laughs> I would just say, just don't do that. Under, even though that they're under stress, just find something else to do that's not dangerous. Okay, so how do you say, I am too good for drugs and violence in Spanish? Dile no a las drogas y violencia. So what would you say is the message of hope to encourage your friends to just say no to drugs, guns, and violence? I'll just be like, just say no and keep on doing what you do best to just like stay off drugs. Oh, I tell you what, this couldn't be a better day ever. Most fantastic day. The weather cooperated. Thank you, sunshine. And over 5,000 walkers came out today to be a part of this grandiose event. But I tell you what, the parts that you've all been waiting for, who are the winners of the banner contest? I'm going to announce the winners now. So in the middle and high school division, grades 6 through 12, we have in first place Memorial Middle, the SWAT. In the second place, we have Randall Mental, and that's NJ High School. And then we also have third place, Greco Middle. All right, so we're moving on to our next division, elementary K through five. In first place, we had Calhoun Elementary. In second place, we had Morgan Woods Elementary. And then in third place, Lake Madeline Elementary. And then our final category of banners for the community agencies K through 12, we have in first place, PAC 217, Den 7. Second place, we have Girl Scouts, and that's Truth 628. And then third, we have Men of Vision. Kudos, kudos to everyone that participated in this. Wow, wasn't that fantastic? Such a great day, great weather for a walkathon. So many dynamic teens, their parents, their teachers and guardians came out to support that great cause here at MOSI, Museum of Science and Industry, in the heart of Tampa Bay, Florida. Well, we would be remiss if we didn't invite you along to see the rest of the exciting artifacts and great exhibits here at the MOSI. We found someone very nice from the educational department by the name of Jeff who's going to take us on tour and we just kind of wanted to invite you along. I actually tracked this young man down here from the educational division. He's one of the specialists, fine specialists should I say, at the MOSI, the Museum of Science and Industry. And where else would I track him down besides in this bubble? Yeah, we just spent a lot of time there. Five <laughs> stories. Yep, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Well, for, for everyone and myself, can you tell us what the actual name of this bubble is? Well, this is the IMAX Dome Theater at Mosey, and it's, of course, a lot of people are familiar with the IMAX films. They know that they're very, very big, but this is an extra special one. This right here is a dome, which means that instead of being a flat screen that just happens to be really big, it's a very, very large screen, but it also curves around you so that it kind of takes up a lot of your peripheral vision, mm -hmm. so that it really immerses you in the picture and in what's going on. It's, it's absolutely awesome. It's ten and a half thousand square feet of awesome on a screen. It's that, yeah, it's actually the only IMAX dome theater in Florida. There are other IMAX theaters, but we are the only dome in the entire state and really even, you know, in, in this region of the United States. So for parents and, and people that are traveling to this area, schools that are coming, uh, different type of after school programs, mm -hmm. how many people can be seated in this beautiful facility? Well, we can see the seating in here is 338 people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and quite comfortably, really, and it's really neat because everybody always wants to to, you know, they want to get in, they want to get like the best seat, and then the greatest thing is there isn't one because there's not a worst seat either. It's just the way that everything is positioned. You know, all the seats down in front are reclined, the seats up top, you know, face down in. So, really, no matter where you are, 
you're getting that full experience, which is absolutely cool. Well, I'm excited. I'm just looking forward to going to the next area that we can have some fun. Sounds great. Sounds Let's great. Do Let's yeah. do it. Okay, so hi, Jeff. We hey. meet again, and we're here at Amazing You. Yep. Okay, so we have a nice handsome gentleman behind us. Well, you know, I, this, uh, they say he may be the future, so it's uh, it's very interesting. This right here is just one of the many, many exhibits in our awesome Amazing You exhibition. It's just so cool. We have so many neat interactive exhibits. I mean, this is one of them right here. It's actually one of my favorite. You know, everybody likes, uh, you know, comics and superheroes and everything. And this is like our cybernetic human. This is our, our bionic man. And it's neat because what it does is it gives an array of various enhancements or fixes really, um, different prosthetics, uh, and it looks at everything from how they might move, like the myoelectric prosthesis here, which actually uses you know, the nervous system to recreate you know, accurate human movements in a prosthetic that looks very human, like this one right here. Um, but it also looks and goes into the materials as well, and advancements in materials. I mean, we're not just doing the pirate peg leg thing anymore. Right, right. You know, eventually we're going to be using, and we're actually starting to use already, things like Kevlar and carbon fiber, which are very, very lightweight, but very strong and very durable. Um, it, you know, it takes less energy, it's less stress on the body. Sure. So it's just all sorts of ways that we might be able to add a little longevity to human life um, by assisting things that might have broken down along the way. Wow. And so um, you were speaking about the, the hand, and we got some of that on, on film yep. there. And were you actually making that prosthesis move? And so mm -hmm. it uses the central nervous system. Yep. Okay, so this gives an opportunity for families and schools and, and parents when they come. It's so interactive, and I think that that helps a kid to learn when they can kind of touch, see, feel, smell, taste, and hear. Here's the deal. I, I know you went on your nice just teens tour with the videographer and yes. you did a beautiful job <laughs> uh, but you left me back over here at this nice checker checkers this brings back memories oh yeah and so this is something that we can hop around and th oh there goes the little one yeah There's, oh my goodness we wanted to put this on a giant gigantic uh, pickle barrel but the, you know it just wasn't <laughs> as safe as, as we had hoped so okay so i guess uh, we have choices here when we're doing these checkers yes this is also a very challenging game for even kids to give them color association and movement and strategy. Yep. What yeah, do you well, tell me? Well, yeah, and, and the, the strategy and also um, just the kind of planning ahead is that, that really interesting because you'll start to see, you know, they'll just focus on the right now. They'll be like, oh, there's a move open and I want to take that. But as they start to play and they get experienced, they start to think, oh, if I do that, they're going to be able to do this. So maybe I should look at something else. And it's neat because it's a lot of really awesome critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's literally kind of forging new highways in their brain just by playing a game. I mean, it's, it's a cool way to learn. Oh, you know what? I'm curious. I want to pick up one of these pieces if I can. Oh, of course. So they're not very... Um not very heavy. No, okay. no, it is a chubby checker, but okay. I mean, it's a, it's, they're not as you know what? small as normal. You and I are going on the road. <laughs> so here's the deal. What kind of game you got? Well, uh, you know, I do have a checkered past. Well, uh, uh, you yeah, know what? And so. I have had a checkered past <laughs> before on airline. <laughs> let's, let's see what you've got. Let's see what you've you know got. What? Let's see. Okay, All right. let's go for it. Long, long live the king. Yay. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I learned from the best, though. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, consolation prize uh, is I have to prepare dinner, apparently. <laughs> so I, I pulled some things I think that she'll enjoy. So um, yes. I'm, I'm paying. I'm paying my dues here. Yes. Um, now this right here is the is the fields to meals area of uh, kids in charge, and it's really neat. Um, you know, it's kind of a focus of younger kids. We usually have ages about seven and under, but it's really funny because especially on a slower day, you always find the bigger kids are in here. You get high schoolers in here that are wanting to come in and play house and all sorts of weird stuff. So 
But uh, it's neat. You know, it, it kind of gives them it gives them jobs to do. They kind of learn about a profession and a responsibility. But they're also learning about you know the food groups. It's it's really one of like the main things we like to do here at the museum. Like I've always said uh, personally, I think you should have fun on purpose and learn on accident because it's the best way to really hold on to the things that you that you, that you learn and you experience. So we do that here. So they're learning about like what foods are are healthier. We have in kind of an overabundance of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. But then we also have some examples of the desserts and stuff that might not be quite as good for us, but we also love to eat. So to show that it's just, you know, the right amounts of everything or what you want. Come <laughs> on to the Mosey and be served by this great dinosaur here. Hot wings, <laughs> my friend Jeff. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, so there, so there we go. So, so my gift to you for the, the your, your, in honor of your checker victory is a, a good healthy, good healthy meal here. The queen is well pleased. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, sir. What do you call this? You know, this right here, again, it's a lot of the things we have in Kids in Charge is learning through actual play. Yes. And this, of course, is a giant inflatable slide. And there are lots of actually scientific principles that you can learn just by sliding down a slide. You can learn about things like gravity, yes. which pulls you down. And you can learn about things like friction, you know, how when you rub up against certain surfaces, you move either faster or slower, depending on how it interacts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and even just air pressure, how you can get way up there and really the only thing holding you up is air. <laughs> well done. Is my air goes still intact. <laughs> the surfers are still there. <laughs> hey, now you gotta help me off of this thing. <laughs> okay. Whew. Now that was one heck of a ride. <laughs> so this is the the Cronus star projector from Goto. Uh, there's over a hundred individual high-definition projectors um, on it and basically what happens is these different projectors come together uh, to make up a large picture of what the night sky would look like literally anywhere in the world also at any point in time so we can take people uh, to any country they'd ever want to see but also back in time forward in time to show them what the prospective night sky would look like well, I tell you what, we have had an exciting time here at the Mosey, the Museum of Science and Industry, and it's been so great to have a fantastic tour guide along with us. You know, always I ask our tour guides and our guests on the show to just say something dynamic to the young minds and hearts that will be watching this program, but I've heard it said best, and I'm going to let Jeff tell us something great he wants to say to the young people watching. Um, really, uh, my biggest thing is to don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, you don't find, everybody wants answers, but nobody wants to ask questions. And the problem is, those things, they can't exist without each other. You know, don't be afraid to raise your hand in class. Don't be afraid to, you know, not just believe something because someone else says it's true. Go out and look yourself, you know. Just don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. I, you know what? I couldn't say it any better. And as my dear friend said earlier, it's always great to have fun. Uh, on purpose. Yes. Yes. And learn on accident. Yeah. <laughs> have fun on purpose and learn on accident. We'll see you on the next Just Team television program. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, everybody always, when you think about school, the tough thing is like, man, I have to study, I have to, I have to read. Well, everybody learns differently, and we try to hit all of those things here. For the people who really just love, you know, the novel lovers who love to read, we've got the stuff to read, and you can really just take your time and peruse. But for those people, man, that want to push some buttons and see some stuff blow up and light up and, and you know, something set on fire, we've got all that too. And it's neat because we've got the sounds, we've got the visual, we've got the touch, even some, you know, the taste and the feel in some of our exhibits. 